guys, I am back with a 12 by 12 layout and I am going to be using some clear gesso on this page. And because I'm going to do a little bit of mixed media, I probably actually didn't even need this clear gesso, but I wasn't exactly sure what I was doing um, or what I was going to do with this page. So I'd rather be um, prepped and ready just in case. And I'm also going to be using three photos on this page. Um, Definitely, it's one of those things that a lot of people um, ask about is adding multiple photos to a page. So that's what I'm doing on this one. There was three photos. I didn't want to make two separate pages for this event because it just wasn't necessary. Um, this is pictures from us when we went to a little local circus that is near our house. And what I ended up doing is just kind of making a photo grid with the photos and then I matted it on a, a brown colored cardstock. And I really like how that looks because you can get a lot of photos on one page and then do that one event in one page instead of having many, many pages for a single um, event. So what I'm doing now is just taking some plastic packaging and a gelato that I have and adding a little bit of water and then adding it down to the page. And this is a lot of this is going to end up getting covered up. And in the end, I'm going to add a little bit more down. And you'll see that towards the very end of the video. But right now, I'm kind of um, trying to get a little bit of movement um, vertically, not vertically, but uh, horizontally, no, not horizontally, um, like catty corner, like from bottom left to top right. What's that word? Anyway, I'm trying to get like a flow across the page of my gelatos or the color. And then when I put the photo down, it just kind of like draws your eye across the page. That's kind of what I was doing or kind of what I was looking for. So I'm going to dry that up real quick and then my photos are going to go down. But like I said, a lot of this gets covered up. Now, the only thing I don't like about these photos is because we're at the circus, everything's red. The chairs inside were red, the tent is red, so my daughter's wearing red. It's just really red. <laughs> so I ended up using a lot of kind of reddish color elements or things that wouldn't compete with that or complementary colors. So you're going to see that I'm going to end up using that um, other teal cut apart. So I'm trying to use this one and I don't like it. So I'm going to end up using that teal one that says go somewhere lovely, I think, or something like that. We'll see here in a second. I can't quite remember. Um, but I think that complements the red as opposed to trying to use all like pink and red embellishments, which I think would be just way too much. I'm trying to find some complementary colors that will go with the photos and kind of balance everything out because like I said, the photos are like really kind of a ready looking color. So I'm adding that cut apart sheet that says go somewhere lovely. I am adding some die cuts to the top right. I didn't really need what it said on the die cut, so I'm kind of tucking it up underneath the photos. And I, then I'm just kind of playing. And here, those, those little pieces on the right hand side that have the phrases, they're little acetate pieces from Heidi Swap. The go somewhere lovely is from um, one of the, maybe the first Chamel paper collection. I can't quite remember, but it, it came in a Scraptastic kit. And a lot of the things that I'm using today um, did come in a Scraptastic kit. And it's an old kit. I think it's from a couple of years ago. So I'm going to end up at using that today acetate piece. And now I'm going to fiddle quite a bit on this layout, just trying to figure out what I want to do as far as a layering goes. And I'm just going to keep trying different things until something looks good. And you know, sometimes I struggle with these scrapbook layouts and sometimes they come out really, really quick. It just kind of depends. And for whatever reason, this one was just giving me fits. I just was not um, having a very easy time trying to figure out what to do on this layout. And I think it really was because of the very reddish photos. But I think in the end, it ends up turning out good. So I added those yellow doilies. Those also came in the kit. And I thought that looked well with the red, blue, and the um, page. So that's kind of why I end up using them. And so I'm going to keep those doilies where they are. And then I'm going to try to find some layering on the right hand side. Now I felt that because I put that blue square piece on the left, it needed some balancing on the right. Now I know the photos are really, really kind of dark, but I wanted to um, do something to balance a little bit on the right because it felt like it was a little bit too light now on the right. So you'll see here that I'm going to tuck some things in here and there. And then I'm going to end up putting like a dark white and I think it's like a brownish color polka dot piece on the right hand side and I think that really helps to balance it. So you can see that kind of sitting there and I'll be putting that in here in a minute. This is also from the Chamel paper collection, this strip that I'm adding and I think this kind of helps anchor it so it didn't look like the whole layout was floating. I felt like it was kind of looking that way on the page. So I end up adding that strip and I really think that helps kind of give it a shelf to sit on and I will trim that out just slightly 
because I don't need the strip going all the way across. I wanted it to have some um, cardstock showing on either end. I didn't want it to butt all the way up against the right hand side of the page. So now I'm pretty happy with most of this layering. So I'm going to end up gluing everything down so it ends up sticking and I don't keep moving it around when I'm trying to move the page. And so now I'm just going to put everything back down kind of how I had it, sorry, kind of how I had it before. Now I do have the clear gesso in the background, so when you do have mixed media like that, I do highly recommend using lots of adhesive because a lot of times, especially the clear gesso, the one that I use, it, use has kind of a grit to it. And if you don't use enough adhesive, then it, it tends to not want your things that you're putting down to stick. So make sure you're using enough that they don't fall off your page later on. Now this is an acetate piece and normally I would staple it down, but this time I decided because you, if you glue just a little bit on behind the, the pink of the today, you wouldn't see the glue and it ended up working out pretty well. So I ended up doing that instead of stapling it this time. And you really can't see the, the adhesive once it dries. So now I'm adding in the doilies and I'm going to put that one up there in the top left and then I'm gonna put the bigger one with a little cutout because I don't want to waste any of that piece. I'm going to put that down in the bottom right just like I had it earlier. So just taping and tucking all the little bits and pieces back into place. And here's that strip I was talking about and once I add this strip, I don't know, for whatever reason it just seemed to come all together. The page did. It just really, really helped which seems so silly that one little bitty strip of paper would do that, but I just really like how that ends up balancing everything out. It just makes it look a lot better. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you ever have those things where it's like, you're just kind of like, ah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and then you do one little thing and you're like, wow, that makes it look so much better. So yeah, let me know if you guys have those issues too. So now I'm taking some of these little enamel stars. They're from Chicken Nitty, and I'm adding them across the page. And these are pretty cool. I like any of those enamel dots, enamel stars, all those enamel kind of stickers are so much fun. They add a little bit of um, texture to the page and give a different look to it because it has that shiny look as opposed to some of the flatter, um, more uh, matte elements of the paper. So I'm just taking the variety of um, stars and then I'm also taking some other enamel dots that I just have in my stash and adding those to the page in three different places to kind of draw your eye around the page. And here's where I'm going to add a little bit more gelato and I highly recommend doing this before you stick everything down because I'm going to like attempt, which is a really terrible attempt to try to tuck this in and get this on the page. I don't know what I was thinking. So I'm just going to end up smushing that down right there and then trying to make it look like it's coming out from underneath. And then I do put a little bit of that gelato on top underneath the today. So it ends up turning out okay, but it's really probably a better idea if you did this before you had everything glued down. I do find out or do think that it's up a little bit higher than I wanted. I wanted to kind of come out more from behind the doily, but you know, it's all good. It ends up working out in the end. So um, now I am just, I finished journaling on the right hand page and I'm adding my title. Um, the flora part of the title is from mm, me and my big ideas. No. We are memory keepers font and then the circus is from a chicken nitty sticker sheet and now I'm just going through some printables that I've had in my stash for some time I think they may be from Studio Calico but they have been in my stash for I mean like years so I don't remember if that's exactly where I got them but you can find printables online free printables all over the place and I just print them on my home printer on some cardstock and then I end up just cutting them up in smaller pieces like this and then when I get ready to use them I just fussy cut them out a little bit more clean so I'm going to add up adding that circle up there above the go somewhere lovely and I'm going to add a little geotag right by the word flora here in a second. It's kind of a peachy orange color and I think it kind of um, mimics the color that's in the circus part of the title and I like how that looks. So I'm just going to tuck that over there on the right hand side kind of up underneath the A and the flora. And I do it so that you don't, I don't uh, cover up my journaling that I have there but I think it kind of adds a nice little ending to that part of the title. So now I'm just kind of looking around more, seeing if there's anything else in this um, printable pack that I have here. And I decide that's pretty much all I need for that. And now I'm going to add these cute little flags. I think they're from Basic Gray. Um, they have little um, pieces of paper flags on them and then they have toothpicks. So they kind of can tuck up underneath some of the um, 
layering and things. So I'm going to add a little flag right here, which I think turns out really cute. And I think I end up having to move an enamel dot to make everything fit. And I just put that enamel dot kind of above the flag here in a second. So you'll see that here in a minute. Oh, yes, yeah, put it above. <laughs> And I'm going to try to stick another one over here on the right hand side, but I think it ends up looking like it's just too much and I end up not doing that. So now I'm just going to finish off by putting a couple brads um, up in the kind of there section <laughs> on the left and then one in the middle of that geo tag. So that's pretty much it I think. I am just going to get those in and then I am going to show you some close-ups and then there'll be some photos at the end. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this process video and if you have any comments or questions leave them below. Thank you guys and I will talk to you guys again very very soon. Bye!